What's going on ladies and gents? We have a washer and dryer we're going to pick up right now. Um, not too far away, like 25 minutes, and we're getting them for $100. The dryer is supposed to work perfectly fine. The washing machine, I'm assuming it's leaking a little bit. He said it needs the new um, like inlets or the water inlet for the washing machine. That's what he said it needs but I don't know that for sure. I don't really have a lot of information on that, so we're headed there to pick it up right now. I'll ask him some more questions, so we'll see if that's just not leaking, um, or if that is leaking, or what the issue is, so yeah. So as you guys can see, uh, I just picked up the washer and dryer right here. I don't really have a lot of more information on the washing machine other than him saying the water valves need, need to be replaced and the, and the reason for that is that this guy was basically deaf and didn't have his hearing aids in. I kid you not. That's what he told me. Here are the washer and dryer that I got back at home. The knobs are inside of them so I do have those but really nice looking set. Frigidaire, people don't usually love the look of these, but with them being a matching set and so clean, they'll probably be fine. I haven't looked at these inlet valves on this yet, but the guy said he thinks these need to be replaced. So before I run a test load on it and see what's going on, I am gonna take this off just so I can take a look at the inlet valves. So I got the hoses off the washing machine and kind of like I was hoping, um, these look really dirty and so I'm going to pop these out and hopefully it's just these filters right here and we can put them back in and it'll work fine. So it's kind of what I was hoping was wrong with them, but we'll see if that's what the real issue is. To get these out, I prefer to use a little flathead and I can usually pry them out just like you saw there. Pretty gummed up. You gotta be careful because it's easy to break these and just damage them, but yeah, water's falling out of there. So. so basically when it comes to these, I'll just run water through this side, kind of reverse of what it normally does and it'll knock a lot of that gunk out or You can blow on them and start getting a lot of it out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I know a lot of y'all were staring at that piece I had on my lip in the last clip. <laughs> but anyways, whenever you get them cleaned out pretty good, which I'm having a hard time getting these really clean, then you'll just pop them back in here, just like we took them out. So I'm gonna do that and uh, then we'll hook up hoses and we'll test it. All right. About to test the washer and dryer. We got them hooked up. Before we start, let's see if it's leaking. It's not leaking, it's getting water supplied to it. Okay, plug it in. Now, We'll just do colors, I guess. Let's see what happens. That's running with no issues. That's running let me say something I got this from an older couple and to be quite honest I prefer to buy things from older couples because they take better care of things when I'm getting something from an older couple that says dryer works perfectly fine washing machine may need this I know that's probably the exact darn truth when I buy from younger people 
they'll tell me that both of them work fine and that neither one of them work or one of them water is dumping everywhere maybe it's just because they're more financially stable but for some reason the older the people are that I'm buying from the more trust I have that what they're telling me is the actual truth and not to mention when older people have stuff they actually take care of stuff like this is an older washer and dryer set and it's in immaculate condition no scratches no miscoloration no missing knobs no broken anything it's in perfect condition so kudos to the older folks out there you guys take a lot better care of things than us younger folks do the only other thing I see on these machines is that they're uneven I think this is missing a leg right here because obviously I put that wrench underneath it. Um, so they're a little off balance. And this one too. Kind of rock. So I'll flip it over and see uh, what's going on with the legs. The legs look fine. And you can just screw and unscrew them. But they look fine. I think it might have been sitting on this. Pretty weird. This thing sounds like something's running. Water is leaking in here. And yeah, these are making a noise. So I took one of these thingies, can't remember the name of them. Just like a putty knife. Shove it under here, pop this side. Shove it under here, pop this side. Just so I can see what's happening in here. Yeah, I mean, I think they might be right in the fact that I guess the inlet valves aren't good on it. Hmm, that's weird. But another thing that's interesting, why is this hose so twisted? Right here. That's almost like it's kinked. So maybe there's a chance that because this is kinked, the water pressure is so low that it doesn't stop it. It actually allows water to get back in there. I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can twist that and make it where it doesn't uh, turn and kink up a little bit. Alright guys, there was a little clamp on here um, that I had to get off, but I did twist the hose so it's not twisted as bad. You can tell a little better when it's shutting. Uh, that's not a twist in it. That's just where it was twisted, so... Um, I'm gonna see if that makes a difference. And I was wrong. Yahoo! So now I'm coming to these inlet valves. I need to pull these clamps off. And I'm gonna have to check for continuity. So have your multimeter set up to continuity or ohms resistance. Nothing. Getting nothing, period. What in the world? Interesting, I'm getting no reading on all these, so yeah, these might be bad. So be careful doing this. Well, I've got the washing machine plugged in. Got to hook these back up. Hear that? And if I touch them right now, they're vibrating. Can feel their own. I'm starting to wonder if it's got more of an issue with the timer. 
because if I turn this down to here, Ladies and gents, like I was saying with older couples, they're usually more trustworthy and all that. And fortunately and unfortunately, the guy was telling the truth and it does need new water inlet valves. Luckily for us, they're like 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon. So I'm gonna look up the model number and the part number for that water inlet valve. And hopefully that'll be here tomorrow and we'll stop that puppy on and we'll be in business. So dang, I was hoping I wouldn't have to buy anything. Well, isn't this lovely? I'm looking for the model number. And it was like on a sticker, right? Well, I can't even see it. It was on like a sticker right here. And now, it's faded. All right, so a lot of times I just look at the model number of the whole machine and I can find all the parts listed on it. Like I showed you up there, the uh, model number is worn off, but a lot of times you can just come to the part look it up I'm not for sure but I'm thinking this number right there is the part right there so I'm gonna look it up and see if I can find it all right guys I just ended up getting on Amazon because I couldn't find the part number on there and um, typed in frigid uh, top load frigid air top load washing machine inlet valve and just scrolled through Amazon until I found the exact one that I was looking at. Anyways, it's ordered, it should be here tomorrow. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see here, our delivery did come in the mail. It's been two days, it came in uh, the following day, but that was yesterday evening, and I wasn't about to work yesterday evening. So, we're about to do it this morning. We'll get this thing replaced, we'll test it, Make sure it works, get it listed, and hopefully get it sold today too. We'll see what's in deliver this. Beautiful little water inlet valve. Doesn't look exactly like the other one, but should fit. Again, to lift the top of the washing machine, there's two tabs, one here, one here. Press in, it should pop up. So here's the old water inlet valve. It stuck through the back of the washing machine. As you can see, there's one screw right there that was holding it in. Now there's a little clamp right here. We'll slide up, pull this hose off, and replace it. Whenever I was testing these, I don't think the test I ran in the other video is accurate because I try to test this old one, nothing. Try to test the new one, nothing. And basically, the washing machine will call for water, which will uh, send power to these inlet valves and open it to allow water to come through. And, um, so right now, obviously it's not calling for water and it's not plugged in. So therefore, uh, these would not have continuity. So I don't know. Hopefully that's right. And hopefully this one, hopefully this one works and hopefully this was the problem. All right guys, got the new inlet valve in place. There was a bit of a hiccup. It didn't fit perfectly where this old one did. I mean, it fit through here, but the screw on the bottom didn't line up. But there are two other holes on this side right here. There's two other holes. And uh, one of those, I got to line up with the hole right here. Um, and so the screw that was in it and the screw that they sent didn't fit so i had to use a 5 16 and put one of those screws to hold it in place so so far no good <laughs> kind of jimmy rigged it but um now we will just hook up these these two things right here will just slide on and then we'll test it all right 
horrible news, ladies and gentlemen. Because I wasn't able to order the exact one, these little terminal connectors will not fit. These are too narrow, this is too wide. As you can see, that's a little bit wider than this is. But what I can do, take the terminal off this other one that I have. These are a little longer, a little more flexible. And I can squeeze them down and get it to fit. So, my buddy Chip, at Harper and Knowles wash and dry repair. Showed me one time. What I can do is snip these and replace it with these. So I'll uh, snip this one off and I'll splice these wires together so then these will become my connectors. So I might be completely ruining this washing machine but we're gonna give it a go because I'm kind of irritated. All right, guys, this was a darn highly stressful situation, but these were the old connections. And these are the new, as you can see, I just kind of spliced them, spliced all the lines together and those connections fit on that inlet valve, so I've got no idea. I might have ruined this up. This sucker might spark and blow up. It might burn it up. I don't know, but we're going to try it with our new little gig. All right, ladies and gents, this is the moment of truth. We're all hooked up and ready to go. About to plug it in. We will see what happens. I'm not getting electrocuted touching it, so that's good. Water entering the tub, so we'll wait and see what happens. We got us a problem. We're leaking. We were not leaking a couple days ago, so it's not good. So I popped the lid on this, and what I can see is our fill hose, or like our uh, water level hose, came off of the side of the tub. And you see that little thing down there? This just pushes on there, so let me do that. So what you guys saw right there was the pressure switch too. Now your pressure switch is connected to your load size knob. You got small, medium, super plus. Um, so basically you pick what size load of laundry you're doing and that determines how much water is going in there. What that pressure switch tube does is it connects to the side of the tub. As the tub fills with water, pressure gets built up in that tube and will either keep your switch on or switch the tube off. And or switch the switch off but that tube isn't very long so when I was working on it earlier and I had this tilted all the way back it uh, disconnected it from the side of the tube so that's why we were leaking so I went ahead and connected that back we'll run this load again and I think we got our issue fixed so we'll see so at the end of the day what we're hoping to see here is that 
when this thing turns off, the water quits filling. So hopefully these inlet valves turn into stoplet valves and the water can no longer enter the tub because that was what it, was, it wasn't doing the last time. So hopefully we solve that problem. All right, ladies and gents, it's off. It's ran its full cycle. It's not filling with water. I was dumping this out as it was going so it wouldn't overfill. That's why there's water all in this area, but it didn't leak anymore once we got the fill hose on like it was supposed to be. So we'll take the washer, we'll take the dryer, we'll go out there, we'll post some pictures and get it listed. Really quick guys on how I spliced the wires together. So I basically, <clears throat> these were set up just like the other one was set up. So what I did was I just took where one wire was connected to this. I snipped it. I connected it to the same spot on the <clears throat> terminal connector that I used for the washer. But basically to splice the wires together and connect the wires you need to be together, you cut these back so the actual wire is exposed. This is just a casing around it. You take the casing, you get some of these and put them in these corresponding holes and then it will take the casing off. There's actually still part of casing on there. But anyways, once you do that, the wire will be exposed. The way I do it, you just put it together and then you just twist them. And then they do have little, uh, let me show you. They do have these like little wire connectors you can put over the top and then you just twist them on there. And then I use electric tape to tape them together. They also have some better stuff. It's called like heat shrink, but it's basically just a tube that you slide on here. And then you would put these two together and then slide it over the top of both of them and then apply heat to it. And it'll basically melt down on these two and join them together. I wish I had some of that. I don't, that stuff I think actually works better. But anyways, yeah, that's how you would splice together two wires. All right, got these set up to take a picture. We'll get them listed. So it's been about a few hours, and this is a good thing about getting up and getting work done, and getting things listed early. You can oftentimes sell things in the exact same day. So got these two sold for $360. About to load these up, go delivering them. I'm gonna end the video here. But yeah, spent $100 on these, spent I think it was $13 for that water inlet valve, so we can just round up and say 20. So 100 plus 20, $120 total, selling them for 360. So that's a $240 profit. If you guys like this video or if it helped you guys out, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing to the Southern Skunk. And like they say, boys and girls, let the skunk spray.